in our online course now. Link is in the video description. Hi, and welcome back to PhysioTutors. Patellofemoral pain is a condition by which young active athletes are often affected. It is known that exercise therapy forms the cornerstone of treatment, but often poor long-term outcomes are seen, with many relapsing individuals. One of the reasons, therefore, may be that activity modification and proper load management are often overlooked. High repetitive loading of the knee during the transition to adolescence with insufficient recovery is thought to be one of the main drivers for the development of patellofemoral pain. Exercise is good, as it helps build capacity, but exercise alone neglects the impact of the frequent bouts of repetitive loading on the knee. To overcome this, this study aimed to investigate the effects of a treatment strategy for adolescents that focuses on activity modification and load management. A prospective cohort study was conducted, including adolescents with patellofemoral pain aged 10 to 14 years. An intervention of 12 weeks was held where focus was on activity modification and gradual re-exposure to increasing knee joint loads. Next to an initial reduction in sports participation and avoidance of pain aggravating activities in the first four weeks, the athletes were instructed to perform supine bridges and static knee extension holds against the wall. From week five to eight, the exercises progressed to more dynamic ones, side-lying hip abduction, seated knee extension, clamps, and semi-squats. This phase also contained the gradual return to activity using the activity ladder, beginning with a warm-up and followed by 15 minutes of performing the activity. Every week, five minutes could be added if pain did not exceed the OK zone. The activity ladder contained six levels, easy walking or cycling, fast walking or moderate to hard cycling, slow running, stair climbing, running and jumping at medium speed, and running and jumping at high speed. Using the pain monitoring model, athletes could progress to the next level when the activity could be performed within the OK zone without a flare-up of pain. The OK zone was defined as a numeric rating scale from zero, meaning no pain, to 10, corresponding to the worst pain imaginable. When pain during the activity was between zero and two, this was considered okay. In week nine to 12, exercises like standing hip abduction, lunges, squats, and standing hip extensions were performed. In this phase, the athletes could make their return to sport if they reached level six on the activity ladder with no pain flare up and no pain exceeding the okay zone. When the athlete was able to participate in the full training for two weeks without pain, full return to sports was possible. 151 adolescents with patellofemoral pain between 10 and 14 years were included in this prospective study. They had pain for about 18 months and nearly one third had been treated for their knee pain previously. After the 12 week intervention, 86% reported a successful outcome defined as having improved or much improved. This was somewhat lower at 6 months and at 12 months, where 77 and 81% reported successful outcomes respectively. Yet, this is an important achievement knowing that in earlier trials, often a successful outcome is only observed in a minority of adolescents, while much greater benefit is seen in adults. This prospective study showed important improvements in patellofemoral complaints after a 12-week program focusing on activity modification with an initial reduction of sports participation. Over the 12-week course, besides strengthening of hip and knee joint muscles, gradually athletes were reintroduced to performing their activities using an activity ladder and a pain monitoring model. As this prospective study was able to show that at 12 months following the intervention, still 81% of athletes achieved a successful outcome. This demonstrates the power of the progressive increase of loads using a gradual loading protocol together with a pain monitoring model. This way, pain flare-ups can be avoided and gradually the capacity of the knee can be increased. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video and give us a like or a comment down below. 
If you are interested in learning more about telephonal pain, we suggest you have a look at our brand new course with Claire Robertson, which was released lately at physiotutors.com. This was Ellen for Physiotutors. I'll see you in another video. Bye.